So hello, uh, it's not really about kernel performance, it's much more about kernel uh, monitoring and uh, analysis. Uh, how to take crash dumps and to analyze them when uh, your system is gone wrong. So, yeah, just to, to be quick, what's a crash dump? How to get it? Uh, let's do a real dump using uh, for your server, so your laptop or whatever. Then you can also use crash, a tool uh, we will have to review, uh, to perform modification of your kernel memory on the live system and after some tools and things. So basically what's crash dump is just a snapshot of uh, memory of your system side, uh, system state at, a, at an instant. Um, most of you may uh, know core dumps, which are uh, when application does a uh, seg fault or when you trigger it yourself to analyze the memory or you run it on GDB, stuff like that. So you can use it uh, on physical and virtual servers. It's not uh, only for a certain type. It's provided by the, either by the Linux, the hypervisor, or any uh, any appliance to, to dump the memory. And so it's really useful when your system is unresponsive. So uh, for me, I'm a sysadmin, so I have to deal with uh, users making fork bombs, memory leaks, stuff like that. And I have to tell them, okay, uh, here is your fault, and you did the outage, so now you fix your, your code and you publish it again. Uh, at least there is also a cost, a uh, small one, but still. Uh, you have to reserve some memory at the beginning of the, the kernel, of the, the memory uh, of the system, to be able to boot the secondary kernel. And this one will do the, uh, will trigger a new uh, script and application to copy the memory from the running servers to a file, to a network, to a raw device, stuff like that. So from a hypervisor, if you are using VMware, you can just suspend the machine and res uh, copy the file. So it will, when you suspend the, the VM, it will create VMSS file. And then you can just download it and use a, a tool provided by VMware, which is called uh, VMSS 2 Core. Uh, so that way you can you have minimum uh, downtime. If you're using libvirt, uh, you can use virsh. So this command, virsh dump, my guest to do a dump yourself. So it will be the, you will be doing the dump on the host. Uh, QEMU is the same thing, mem save. For this, I have um, uh, I didn't try it, but uh, if somebody has some information about how to get the HDR size uh, uh, argument, it would be good. For me, I only use Vish. And on Xen, you also have the uh, the Excel command to, uh, to trigger the memory save. So you have a bit of configuration to do. Uh, for the kernel, most of them are already enabled in recent uh, recent version of the, the kernel, and also on uh, on kernel version provided by uh, Debian, Fedora, Red Hat, whatever. And so, with this option, crash kernel, it's the amount of memory you have to reserve at the beginning of, uh, of the of the memory size. So it's memory that your system won't have to do. Uh, it's practically lost memory for the, the system side, for the host side. So when you want to configure it, um, it when we are talking about CADump, it's a binary, but it often refers to the whole process of dumping a core. Uh, it relies on KXEC. Maybe some of you know about KXEC. It has been... Uh, uh, it had some bit of advertisement uh, when Oracle uh, uh, created a tool to boot a new kernel so you can keep uptime and stuff like that. Basically, it's just uh, jumping to, to another memory. So it's putting the secondary kernel. Uh, so it's using the memory used, uh, uh, the memory reservation you made at the boot of your main system. And then it will load uh, the dump script and afterward, it will reboot to the main uh, main system. 
Um, this is usually done by making the, the server panic. So it's, uh, it's really when everything is lost. But still, it's better to know what happened, what led to the situation, than just do a reboot. And uh, you just, OK, there was something that's wrong. I can't even check. I can't even log in on my machine. So uh, at least you have a, a bit of analysis uh, to be done afterwards. And um, on physical servers, you can have a pretty large amount of memory. We have some servers using terabytes of memory. So you don't obviously don't want a terabyte of hard disk to store the, the memory. So the make them file, uh, make them tool, can uh, filter the memory by types, page types. Uh, most of the time, we only want the kernel, kernel page use one, not the, the zero or the copy or the cache. Uh, it's not really useful. So when you have to panic, you have multiple ways to do that. Uh, CCRQ, but if you do that, it's basically because you are still have access on the, ser on the server or the computer, so it's not really useful. And uh, the NMI, we talked about uh, on the previous conference, I think. And so you have to be, uh, when using uh, unknown enemy panic, the CCTL, uh, beware because we saw that O-Profile and stuff like that may also use NMIs to communicate. So we don't want to do profiling and then you reboot yourself accidentally. And you can also use uh, the watchdogs or soft lockup or out of memory. So these are CCTLs you can, uh, uh, you can configure to, um, uh, to generate a panic. And if you have no, um, non-server, like your laptop on desktop, you cannot connect to a secondary uh, interface like uh, HP, we heard about the ILOs, you have the iDRAC for the Dell and stuff like that. So you have also uh, software ways to, uh, to generate a panic upon, uh, upon errors. We use uh, if you have access, but most of the time you, uh, on a laptop, uh, yeah, uh, it may work with the, the C, that, uh, the same one we, we injected in the CSAQ trigger, but sometimes uh, the, the USB bus or the, even the keyboard is unresponsive because the kernel is doing uh, all, all the stuff like uh, scheduling or reclaiming memories. Even that is not working. So you have the, your first memory, then you have a panic. This panic, uh, do a k-exec, and on the dump capture kernel, you will be able to, uh, to store the dump on whatever you like, raw device, NFS, SCP, SSH. Uh, it depends on the, the, on the script used in the dump capture. And it's available in uh, most distributions. Uh, so just maybe a demo for this. Here I have a Fedora, uh, CentOS. If I try to inject NMI, uh, the system don't know how to handle it. Uh, sometimes you have uh, kernel modules like HP WDT, HP Watchdog Timer, which uh, tells the kernel, okay, if you get this NMI number, you have to panic, and then everything is going wrong. Uh, if, so if I'm doing uh, just a foreground, see, uh, here I, I enable the unknown enemy panic because I don't have the driver here to, to tell him it. And so uh, I'm making it responsible. So here, if I'm trying, you can see just typing the, the application, just typing the words is not easy. And there it's really not responsive. So with the unknown enemy panic, if I re-inject an MI, now it's re-dumping. So here, it jumped to the new kernel. And here is copying data uh, on a local file. Currently, by default, it's in var crash. So it's like tough time. So when you have your crash, your, your VM dump, you have to analyze it. Uh, you know, the, the best tool for this is crash. Uh, it's a tool made by Dev Anderson on Red Hat. 
and it works on most uh, most architecture. And also, you can write extensions on it. You also have Python extension uh, uh, extensions to do um, user land. Uh, just to capture only the pages for a particular program if you take, if you took the whole dump. And you can even uh, write automatic scripts for analysis. And also, we don't, we want to be able to debug the, the kernel, but we don't want uh, debug versions with all the, the symbols and the overhead uh, in the kernel. So we can use split debug info, uh, which are just uh, files using the, all the debug symbols, but outside of the, the running production binary. Uh, most distributions also provide them. So for Red Hat, you have Red Hat and, and like you have the, this tool, debug info install kernel to get the debug info for your uh, running kernel. The same for Debian. You can use the, the image dash dbg. Uh, not be using it, but just having the symbols. It's enough for for crash. So here we see the the server just reboot. Okay. The server is rebooted. Um, to, I made a few scripts uh, to ease the, the call of the different, uh, different application because the, the real command is uh, crash and you have to specify the whole command line. So for this, I'm just using the, so I, as you can see, it created a folder with the, the host name and the date of the crash. And here I have, I have the VM core file. So the script, uh, the script checked for the entries in the VM, uh, VM core. Uh, <coughs> if you don't have the debug info, it will try to, de to de download them and extract them, and then it will run crash for you. Uh, so maybe it's not the correct one. Here it was a system state. Uh, no, I didn't took the good one. Sorry. Sorry, I, I took the wrong wrong tool. That one. So here he guessed the uh, the kernel inside the um, inside the tool, and now I have the most of the information, though the load average when the crashed, number of tasks, and I have also. Uh, just PS. Uh, all my stuff going here. So now I can do the debugging afterwards. Uh, here you have a lot of uh, tools and commands provided by Crash uh, to give you some information about memory usage, uh, backtrace, see the devices, the files open by process, anything you need for, uh, to uh, check the system. Um, that, so that's where that was the real kernel album we had to, to check into. Uh, so I won't go in details, uh, running out of time. But in fact, it was this bug uh, from Red Hat. Oops. Sorry about this. <laughs> Okay, so now you can also do live modifications. Usually you have to go through devmem, but it's uh, on most of distributions, it's blocked to the four, first four pages. So you can only read one meg of uh, memory, it's not really useful. Um, Dave Anderson also pro provided a solution using a red probe. So here we are using the red probe to check, uh, just to go at the end of the Kernel, uh, kernel function that is uh, testing for the, the value. So that way we are always retaining one, like erasing, uh, erasing this. And with that, we can do some live modifications. So yeah, just a live one. So on this, it will load a small module here, allow devmem which is the one uh, implementing the caret probe. So I can write the memory here. Uh, so, uh, 
so it's save config. Oops. So here, if you want, we can modify all the kernel. We are just in GDB, like we will be in a normal program. Outside, we are doing it on the kernel. So here, uh, I'm using the, memo the, the address, the memory address of of my value. If yeah, device, please. So here I see on ETH0, I have the MTU of uh, 150. Um, so if I'm asking for the offset, here I have the memory address. Uh, just checking, OK, that's it. And now I'm going to be writing memory, let's say. And if everything goes well, we should be seeing it here. That's it. We just changed the MTU uh, on live server. Uh, because grokking in the kernel is a bit hard, you can use open grok, uh, which is um, um, maybe most of you do, do know about Linux cross reference. Our website is mostly uh, search text only. It does not have uh, intelligence about the, the C or the implementation. Open Grok is using uh, exuberant C tags to understand the meaning of each declaration in each text. So here, if I do a full search of FQ cross limit, I will have all these returns, like a full text search. If I ask for only definition, which will just give me the definition of the function at the correct sign, at the correct line. And okay. So, so the the set of tools I'm um, trying to implement uh, the the lat latest version of Crash, uh, and also the the tools for DevMem, so you can tinker with the kernel yourself at your own risk. Uh, not completed yet, but I expect them to be finished uh, end of next uh, week. And also, you have some. Uh, links and information if you want to, to check more about the, the details, implementation, and tools uh, of this. So also maybe Linux Insights, uh, if you want to see uh, uh, good implementation for sysadmins and uh, the, the big, uh, big knowledge of the kernel. That's it. Question. Yeah. That's the default. That's the one. Yeah. This is the, the way uh, Calamp is working. Yeah, you actually this is done by the uh, initrd stuff. Uh, most of the distribution are providing uh, helpers to create the initrd. So in uh, Red Hat and like it's uh, Dracut. Uh, on Debian, I don't remember it, but you have a lot of tools to do that. You can also do your make your own uh, initrd uh, uh, script and embed all the application uh, and stuff you want. Also, you have, um, I can talk this, but fence CADAMP, because if you have a monitoring that sends automatically the, the NMIs, uh, you don't want the dumping kernel to be interrupted while you are dumping the memory. So fence CADAMP will send hot bit to say, okay, I'm still, uh, I'm still dumping, don't kill me again, and after it's done, uh, it can uh, uh, take back or send you an email or whatever. Or you can also, yeah. 